speakers, Pastor Randy and Vicki Hooper. They're from uh, originally from Florida, at Pastor Rodney Hard Brown's church there. But they have a ministry called Connect Your Vision uh, International and Connect Your Vision, um, just Connect Your Vision, two different ones. And uh, they're here with us, and we've just been blessed. They've been with us um, on vacation before and got to speak at our church, and we're just becoming really close friends. And so um, they're here to just be a blessing to our community, to the church, the Big C Church, and to our church. And so will you guys just welcome them tonight? How I many is glad to be in God's house tonight? Come on, shout it out. Give them a big hand clap. You can do better than that. Come on, we're going to have a Holy Ghost meeting tonight. This is about the fire of God coming into you, burning everything out of you, walking and leaping and praising his name. Amen. Come on, give him one more big hand clap. Hallelujah. Then I introduced my wife yesterday, Pastor Vicki, for the ones that wasn't here. 36 years of marriage, and I'm still chasing her. I'm about to catch her. It's starting to slow down a little bit, but all is, all is well. We love ministry. We love getting out. We're traveling evangelists. We're on the road a whole lot, and... Um, you know, I tell you, I, we just had a, a very peaceful afternoon and a, just a very good day. You know, we're staying right around Alaska. <laughs> I mean, the volcanoes where it's very cold, but we're having a good time, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, but uh, a very peaceful afternoon getting with uh, Pastor Kevin and Kimmy and then their friends. And I tell you, I love hanging around people that are real. I do. I love realness in people. And uh, I'm starting to meet a lot of people like that here. And uh, that's, that's very good. Amen. You know, it's not playing church. Uh, a lot of things are happening, and God has a lot of great plans for each and every one of you all. And I can't wait to hear some of the reports that he's going to do with each one of you all. And um, I just know that it's going to be a tremendous week. I know God's going to open up a lot of doors. And I know he's going to actually close some doors. And uh, closing doors don't mean it's bad. You know, there's people that you can hang around that you shouldn't be hanging around with. They'll keep you exactly where they want to keep you, where God wants to put you somewhere else. That's why I don't go around asking people, what do you think? Because I don't really care what they think. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Amen. And I'm going to go in the direction of what God wants me to do. And uh, when you do that, you'll get the glory, the glory and the manifestation of him. And I believe there's going to be a huge manifestation that's going to happen this week. That's going to come out unbelievable. Amen. That you, in, in the, just in a short few months. You know, here's what people do. They, let, let me ask you this. How many have always heard, here we are in what, November? This is still November, right? You've got to help me here, you know. Um, I'm on the road all the time. I don't even know what day it is. But um, so we're getting close to the new year, and everybody's going to say the new year is going to be my year. How many hear that? You know, the new year is going to be my new year. Everything's going to be different in the new year. And I'm just the type of person, why is it going to be different? What's going to make the new year different? You know, I'm just like, I'm, I'm like that. What's going to make the new year different? You know, I'm all about, you know, I, here's, here's how I am. I don't have to wait to January for God to show up. I don't have to wait for the new year for God to do everything. God can start it right now. You can finish out this year better than you ever had. God could bring everything to you in this month that you had, that you, for the, all of, the, of these months we've been through, God can just breathe on it, and it can be one of the best years you've ever had. It can be so good, you don't even want the new year to come. And that's the way that you've got to look at it. God is going to do great things. But what happens is people look, and they, they watch the TVs, and celebrating's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But you ain't going to catch me in New York Square. 
you know, hey, it's going to be a great year and the ball's dropping. And I look at that, why, is, why would I want to be around somewhere where the drop ball is dropping? And I'm thinking, that's just like the world because the world drops the ball all the time. And then people are going, yeah, it's my year, the ball's dropping. Yes, it's not going to be your year. I'm going to move from glory to glory to glory. Can you say amen? And it's just going to get better and better and better. That's what's going to happen because of the, because you know what? God is not in heaven going, hey, disciples, get ready. Angels, get ready. We've got to redo everything. A new year's coming. No, God is ready to breathe on what you want right now. You just got to receive it. You got to believe it. That what comes out of your mouth is actually going to happen. That I'm going to speak it and it's going to be a manifestation of what you speak. Because if you don't see the fruits of your speaking, you're just speaking. You're just a talker. I call them scripture quoters. You're just a scripture quoter. You might know 900 scriptures, but why don't you just know a few that you can apply and use them as your ammunition? Can you say amen? amen. It's about applying the scriptures. It's not about quoting scriptures. It's about I, I know how to apply that scripture. When you go through life and life hits you, then you're going to find the scripture to go back and hit life. Right. And you're going to realize that God is in control and God can do the impossible. Can you say amen? amen. But you can't back down from that. You can't back down from any of that. So I have a stirring in my spirit, and I know what a stirring is. And I have a stirring in my spirit that, you know what, people are going to get healed this week. People are going to get healed this week. You know what? God is going to touch you like he's never touched you before. And he's going to heal you because you've got to claim your healing. And you cannot let the devil steal what you're talking about. We don't serve the devil, can you say amen? We serve the king of kings. We serve where you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. And there'll be no sickness in your body because God never put sickness in your body. The devil did that, but you're going to cast him away. You're going to get rid of it, and you're going to start talking. He is my provider, and my provider is going to get my sickness out of my way. Quit focusing on the problem and let the problem become the symptoms. Focus on God that he's going to get rid of the symptoms. I don't, every time you something hurts, you're going, you know, you got to go praise God. Guess what? God is in control of this. And that's how you, that's how you, you got to learn to how to fight the fight. I love the fight. Fight the good fight of faith. I'm a fighter. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to fight. The, if the devil wants to fight, I love the fight. I tell the devil, come on, let's do it. I have the blood of Jesus on the inside of me. Can you say amen? And that blood has what? Power. And that power. But you know what? You've got to be that all the time. People should recognize something about you in this world. They should recognize something about you that you're different. Yes, Lord. That's what they should do. They should recognize something about you that you're different. Amen. Because why? We are different. We, we, we're not the same. We, we, we actually have came out of that shell. We're different now. Amen. We have been transformed. And a transform, we've been by the renewing of our minds. We think different. We act different. We talk different. And we don't fall into the world's stuff. The world is not here to help you. But Jesus Christ is here to help you. Amen. Jesus Christ is here to give you everything. Everything that you want is right here in this word. And if you'll just apply yourself to his word and see what his word is going to do for you, you're going to find out that he's not left you out. Amen. When it comes to your healing, he wants to heal everybody. The Bible says he put one cent his breath to, to his breath to heal them, three million people, and every one of them were healed. It wasn't that a few got healed, every one of them got healed. He wants to heal everybody. He does not want to heal just a few. He wants to heal everybody. And that's what he wants to do, but he wants everybody to come to him. He wants everybody to serve him. You can't be halfway in this. You've got to be in it 100%. And when you're in it 100%, you're going to find out that God has a lot of plans for you. Can you say amen? amen? You're going to be completely healed. Completely. You're not going to be halfway. Amen. You're going to be completely healed. How many needs a healing in their body right now? Raise your hand. You're going to be completely healed. 
And, and what's, what, what kind of healing do you need? Me? You. Do you need a healing? You was deaf in your ear. It's how we speak. You're not deaf in your ear. You was deaf in your ear. Can you say amen? Stand up. Come here. I want to pray over you right now. Just stretch your hands right here. See, I don't believe in any of this stuff. I don't believe in none of it. In the name of Jesus, I take that foul spirit out of you right now that you'll be hearing from, from this night forward. You'll hear just as clear as you did when you were hearing good. I curse this in the name of Jesus right now. You foul spirit, come out. Come out right now. Come out and let that hearing come into you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. you got to, you got to get in there. you got to get in there and engage with it. And don't, 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 don't be a baby about it. No, that's not me. I have nothing to do with that. That's not me. God is going to heal this woman, and he's going to heal her because he healed her at the cross. She was healed at the cross. you got to understand that. She was healed at the cross. It's not that I'm looking for a healing. I'm already healed. I was healed at the cross. People, you got to grab a hold of this. You came to salvation because you heard God's word. Amen? You heard God's word, and you, you responded to God's word, and you, and you accepted Christ. Amen. You know what Jesus is saying? I did every bit of that on the cross. Why are you not accepting the healing that I did? Amen. I healed you. I, I took every sickness, every disease, every stripe. I bored everything just for you. I did it at the cross. There's no such thing for Jesus about sickness. It don't even exist because his son did it on the cross. He says, you got to go back to the cross, the power of the cross. you got to go back to that power, where that power is at. And you're already healed. Can you say amen? You just need to give him the biggest praise that you can give him right now because he's already healed you in the name of Jesus. Who else needs a healing here? Raise your hand. What, come here. What do you need? What, what kind of healing do you need? Carpal tunnel? Well, come on, right now. I curse it right now. It's not there. It's in your imagination, but it's not there no more. Can you say amen? We're not going to walk all the way out to the street. Take it, <laughs> take it and receive it. How about who, who else? Come here. You, but now what you've got to believe this is going to happen. Amen, amen, amen. What, what healing do you need? Vision. Both eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Come over here. Take your glasses off. Give them, give them right there, right now, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that. That vision is going to come back to you right now. That vision is going to happen right now. You won't have to put your glasses on. It's going to come. He will restore them eyes, the vision, and everything about them eyes right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I, you see, I get aggravated, not at people, how the devil controls people. He's a liar. He's a friggin' liar. You got. You know what? There's people need to start standing up and being bold. You don't. You don't understand what I'm saying. And uh, well, if it's God's will, it ain't God's will for you to be sick. It ain't God's will for you to go through life miserable or struggle. That's not God's will. That's the devil. That's the devil. And you, you're not. That's not what this is about. We don't celebrate the devil. Can you say Amen? Let me hear a better Amen than that. Come on. I'm going to read this for you. Hallelujah. Just start giving him some praise. I tell you, God is on the... God, I tell you, I can feel God moving in a way that is just unbelievable of what, he, of what he's wanting to do, but... People have to understand and buy into it that, you know what, he's, he's wanting to do this for you. 
He's wanting to give everything in. He want, He wants to give everything into you, and he want, He does not want you miserable. That's the devil. He does not want you miserable. He wants you to enjoy life and enjoy life to the fullest. I, you know, I, I talk to people all the time, and they say, you know, I hate my job. Well, quit. Why would you want to still just uh, at a job that you don't even like? Have you ever thought about quitting? What am I going to do? Put your eyes on him and see what he does for you. Can you say amen? Because he's going to do everything for you. Romans chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. For I long to see you that I may impact to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. I want you to really get in and remember that verse. It says here, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. You know what I'm going to believe tonight for the, for the ones that are here? I'm going to believe that the spirit of boldness is on my life will come on your life. Because that's what you need. I started off Sunday, faith, and the ones that were here, faith equals believing, believing equals boldness, and boldness equals victory. Faith is only a, a thing. It's a noun. It lays there until you put something behind it, which believing would be a verb, which would be action. And that's what James says. Faith without works is dead. A lot of people are just talk in faith, but they're not putting any substance behind that faith. you got to put something behind that faith for it to work. So that's when God gives you that faith, then you got to put something behind it so that will actually work for you. And then when you put something behind it, then the spirit of boldness comes on you. And when the spirit of boldness comes on, then you, then you get the victory for that. Yeah. It works like that. Faith equals believing. Believing equals the boldness, and the boldness equals the victory. Amen. That's why you cannot. Ne that's why you can't lose. You never back down on that. This is this is very biblical to be able to take that and say, "I have the faith," but what am I doing with the faith? How am I exercising the faith? If you look at the story of Abram, which we know is Abraham. Abram never got blessed until he started walking the land. And when he started walking the land, the Lord started giving him land. So what does that mean? Some of you are staying still too long. You need to start getting out and moving. You need to, whatever God's putting in you, you need to go do that. And when you're going to do that, you're going to see the doors open. What people want, to be honest with you, what they want, they want everything on a silver tray. I want everything, I'll do this, but I need everything already packaged for me. And then when everything's packaged for me, I'll go do it. Well, that day's not going to come. It's going to come to you as you step. It's going to come to you as you start walking. It's going to come to you as you start exercising your faith. That's what's going to happen. You know, it's like people can be in battles, but they focus more on the battle than what God can actually do. And I'm telling you, you, what you have to do, people say, well, I've gave it to God, then, then quit focusing on the battle. you got to give it up. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I don't get in the way. A lot of times people don't have the victory because they're in the way and God can't move. God is waiting for you to get out of the way. Amen. And when you get out of the way, you're going to see the power of what he's going to do because there's nothing he cannot do. Are you with me? There is nothing that he cannot do. He can do all things. Well, if he can do all things, you need to act like he can do all things. It's like with your vision. Don't let anything foul come out of your mouth about your vision. No, actually, I can see good. You know, actually, God's in control of this. Devil, you're not in this. God, actually, I would take my glasses off and say, I'm going to not need these glasses right now. I would, again, what is that? That's faith, but you're putting a... You're putting an action with that faith, which is a verb, which is action. Devil, I don't need these glasses. I might give them to you. You know, you're going to need them. 
You know, because people go through this all the time, and you got to learn how to fight the fight. You know, it's like if you're being attacked, I would take my Bible and go over to the book of Revelations. I would, I would go over there for the, I've done this. I, I do it all, I've, not all the time, but I've done it several times. I take my book, I go to the book of Revelations, I lay it across my chest because the devil's after me. And I ask him, let's read. I got a bedtime story for you. <laughs> and I want to read this to you because you know what? This is good. Vicky, get the popcorn. This is good right here. You lose, you loser. You're fixing to get thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. You, no, uh, you got to understand something. You think you're going to keep me up? Not happen, Jack. I'm going to keep you up. Come on. Don't leave. Here, I ain't finished with the story. Come on. Let's read some more. I like this story. I like it when you're defeated. I like it when you're a nobody. I like it when you're a liar. I like it when you can't come after me. I like it when my God's bigger than you. I like it that I have the blood of Jesus on the inside of me. I like it when I have victory and you're trying to make me not have victory. I like it when God can do all things. Sometimes you just got to remind him. Because what happens is you're reminding him by complaining or focusing on the problem. Don't, I'm telling you, stop focusing on the problem. Because there's not a problem. Whose problem is it? It ain't even his problem. You just got to give it to him and he'll resolve it for you. But you got to literally give it to him. You just can't talk about it. Keep the word before your eyes. Look at the promises continually. You know, it tells us in Philippians 4, I believe it is, meditate on these good things. The people meditate on bad things. Well, this is what happened to me two years ago. Forget it. Meditate on the good things, the good things that God has done in your life. How many know that God's done great things in your life? Yeah, well, meditate on them. Don't think about the bad. You know, don't think about that. Meditate on the good things. Never consider the symptoms that contradict the word as ground for, for doubting the word of God because it is written. I want you to grab a hold of that. Never consider the symptoms that contradict the word as ground for doubting the word of God because it is written. How many know that's a very powerful phrase, it is written? It is written. It, the Bible says, I will watch over my word to perform it. That's what it tells you. I will watch over my word to perform it. He says, I'm, I cannot lie and I cannot be mocked. So your ammunition is God's word. And to throw God's word back at the situation and use it with force. And, 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 and don't, don't, don't let it get to you. You got to stand up. Nope, that's not for me. Nope, that's not for me. I remember years ago when Pastor Vic and I first got in the ministry, uh, it's like a, hang uh, like a firecracker would go off. And when you're first starting, a firecracker seems to be pretty big. And you pastors know that, you know. Oh, oh gosh, what are we going to do now? You know, that's, oh, gosh, what are we going to do now? But then you learn to deal with firecrackers. And then a cherry bomb would come. Well, you go, what are we going to do now? But then you learn to deal with cherry bombs. Then hand grenades come. And then you learn to deal with hand grenades. Then missiles come. Then you learn to deal with missiles. So I built my own missile launcher. And when the devil throws a missile at me, I reload it and send it back to him. Are you with me? Because that's how you deal with it. You don't accept what the devil's trying to do. You reject it. You accept everything that Jesus has for you. But you, reje you reject it. It is written. You, you know, that word is so powerful that, you know, the devil used it to, to Jesus, that it is written. That word is so powerful, the devil tried to use it to Jesus. Let me see if I can't find that. A lot of times you just really have to convince people by reading the word. Hallelujah. Matthew 4. Listen to this. Then, then Jesus was led up into the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, 
afterwards, afterwards, he was hungry. Now when, he, now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Now listen to this. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But listen to this. But every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We live by every word that proceeds right here because it came from God. That's where we live. We don't live anywhere else. We live right here in this word is where we live because God wrote this word. Every scripture was an inspiration of God. That means Old Testament and New Testament. He picked the authors, but the Bible says all scriptures was, was an influence of, of him. So always remember that. But he answered. Now, now in, in verse 5, now I want you to catch this. The devil took him up into a holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. The devil said that. Jesus didn't say that. He said that in the previous verse, it is written, which is powerful. So the devil knew, hey, that's powerful. I'm going to try it. But it didn't have the punch to it because it wasn't, it wasn't of God. Can you say amen? amen? So it didn't have that punch, so that punch did not work. But he actually used what Jesus already said in the previous verse because it is written. And, and then it goes on that he gave his angels and their hands and they shall they they uh, uh, they shall bear you up and let let you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, "It is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God." Again, the devil took him up on a exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, "All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me." That's how powerful worship is. If you will fall down and worship me, I will give you all these things. That's in Matthew 4 and verse 8. But you've got to understand this. The devil has that kind of power. Because you remember when Jesus was going to get crucified and Pilate said, did you know I have the authority to release you to where you don't have to be crucified? That's what he was telling him. And Jesus said, no, you don't. My father does, but you don't have that. That's what he said. But in this scripture, you notice Jesus did not rebuttal. He didn't come back with him. He didn't rebuttal anything. You know why? Because the devil has this kind of power. But he was not going to fall to it. He wasn't going to fall to it, but he has that kind of power. Folks, you need to wake up. The devil's in control of this world. The devil is. But we as believers, God's in control of us. Can you say amen? amen. And that's what, we, that's what we stand on. But the devil wants to trick you up. He wants to make you look like an idiot. And he wants to do all these terrible things with you. But you, but you know what? Stay in the word and stay in church. You've got to be fed. You've got to stay in church. You've got to have the word. And you've got to have that fresh word all the time. But Jesus said to him, away, away. With you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. I would have to say in my life, I would say in the last three years, I have learned to worship at a deeper level. I love praise and worship. Don't get me wrong. But praise and worship, just praise can, can get emotional. Praise can, I feel good. You know, I'm, I feel that, I feel that. But you know what? Faith does not have a feeling. A lot of times people go, I have the faith this because I can feel it. Faith does not have a feeling. Faith does not have a feeling about sickness. Faith does not have a feeling about the things. That's why faith can stand its ground because there's no feelings here. And when you put that verb behind it, that action, and that's where you're going to get the victory. Can you say amen? amen. But that, that's what happened, and that's what you've got to grab a hold of is that God has great things for you, and it's not next year, folks. It's now. Amen. You've got to understand faith is of the presence. Hope is of the future. I hope I get healed. Get away from me. I'm going to be healed now. I'm going to be healed now because faith is of the presence right now. I'm not putting my healing off to hope. 
I don't want someone over my deathbed going, God, I hope he makes it. I'll get up and slap them. No, get away from me. I don't want no hope. I want the presence of the Lord right now. Can you say amen? And the presence of the Lord right now is not, I, if it's your will, heal me. Of course it's his will to heal you. Can you say amen? That's why you got to keep saying, I, I don't, I've not lost no death in my ear. My ear is fine. My ear can hear everything that God wants me to hear right now, and it's going to get better and better and better and better. Can you say amen? It's an attack. So join the attack. That's what you got to do. You got to join that attack. And when you join that attack, you're going to find out that God has greatness for you. Every day, every day, seven days a week, he has something for you all the time, all the time. You just need to receive it. And that, you know what, again, that's, that's the whole thing that people don't know how to receive. They got everything figured out. But they're not receiving what God has from them. You got to learn how to receive. Can you say amen? amen. And that's why we're not we're not an exception to His word. I know I know His word. I know His word. I'm I'm getting the download right now from heaven for you all. Right now, I I don't have a message. My message is coming from heaven. My message is just a download of what he wants me to say. Can you say amen? amen. I'm not going to give you a story that's not going to help you. And you walk out of here and go, what was that about? No, you're going to walk out of here tonight going, the way that I came was not the way that I left. I tell you, Jesus showed up. The power showed up. I got healed tonight. I'm speaking faith. I'm going to put action behind it. I will not let one negative word come out of my mouth. On my lips is God's word, and only on my lips is God's word. It does not matter what you're going through. It does not matter how tragic it is. It does not matter. God is in control. I'm going to put God in control, and I'm going to let God be in control. Can you say amen? And that's what's going to happen. It's a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing, and it's fun. It's not depressing, it's fun. I love seeing the devil be defeated. It's like, hey, let's do that again. That was a good time. I like that. So let's, let's have another round. You know, because you, can't, you cannot get down in life. Life will take you down. But I'm not about life. I'm about his life. I'm about heaven. I'm about the glory of God. I'm about what he's going to do. I'm about, how, I'm about ministering the word and how the word can help you and not back down from nothing. This woman and I, we don't back down from anything. Our staff, we don't back down from nothing. It's not going to happen. And I'll go anywhere because we're, we mean business. We show up at people's house because they want us to pray for them. I'm, we're there. Well, there, I mean, it's going to ha it's gonna happen. Can you say amen? Because it's serious. It's serious stuff. Amen? It's very serious. I felt good this afternoon. There was a peace. I was with the pastors and Nick back there. It was a peace. And let me tell you something, sir. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be fine. Your assignment, your assignment is to keep her going. Amen. That's your assignment. Your assignment is to make sure she gets up and walks Amen. around. Your assignment is to make sure that she does not stop. Amen. That's your assignment. And you know what? I know you're going to do very good at that. You've already done very good at that. But now join her and believe that she's completely healed. And just, and just believe that, you know what? Devil, you lost. You're a liar. You lost. You did not win this. You lost. Can you say amen? And don't touch my wife again. I'm telling you, get your friggin' hands off my wife. Get upset with him. Get your hands off my wife. 
And that's what I did with her about 10 years ago. It was real simple. Get the hell out of here. Did he just say hell? Did he just? Yeah, I did that for the religious people. I like for them to go, he just said hell. Who cares? It's a word. Where do you think he's at anyway? But I, I left there today, sir, and I felt good. I did. And, and, and I, your pastors are so supportive. But I, and I appreciate you and them, uh, the pastors inviting us. Um, you know, we've, we've just, we've seen a lot. We've seen God do a lot. And uh, you got to know how to stand. And um, there, I could tell you stories after stories after stories. And you know what? This is going to be another story. That's going to manifest. And it'll be a great testimony. And you got to see her giving the testimony. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I just really feel in my spirit to go here because I just got a, some information. Um, to what to preach. <laughs> hey, you know, I was at a church in Orlando, and um, and they, they go in the back room and pray for the service. And I'm thinking, why? Are you just now praying? I was praying way before that. That's kind of crazy to me, but anyway. And um, and the pastor says, I want this service done by 11.15, is what he said. It's, I think the service started at 9, I don't know, probably 10, or 9.30 probably, 9.30. And he goes, in. I'm his guest speaker. He goes, I want this service. I don't want to hear the Holy Ghost showed up. I don't want to hear nothing. I want this service done at 11.30. At 11.30, I want this service done, cleaned up, everything. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm sitting, Pastor Vic and I are sitting right there on the front row. This, is, this really happened. He got to preaching, according to him, you know. We can have different opinions about that. And then he, uh, he came up to me at 11.15. And gave and handed me the mic. He goes here. I said never. I don't want it. It's <laughs> from his congregation. I'm, I'm fine, Pastor. Go ahead, close it up. I'm sure you're under the anointing. So I, I didn't take it. And um, he goes, no, seriously, go ahead. And I said, no, seriously, you keep it. I wasn't about to get up. I said, no way, seriously, you keep it. I know, I know you're probably under the anointing. I've been, you know. I was just being a jerk, you know, a drive over there, you know, hey, you're not going to give me no microphone 15 minutes prior. And then uh, we went back and forth like that for about two minutes. I, I was not taking that mic. And then he made a mistake, a, a big mistake. He said, Pastor, take your time. Should have never told me that. I wrapped that service up at 3.30. It don't do me that way. And then I took up his church tithe and offerings. He says, that's the biggest church tithe and offerings we've ever had. I said, well, sir, it's really easy. You don't preach. You just play the game. If you think I came from my offering, don't give me anything because I don't care about your offering. No, and he, you know, he gave me a little whatever. But you know what? When God's moving... You got to get into you got to get into his business. When you're into his business, he gets into your business. Now I know this is going to be a, a good week. To me, it's not a long week. 
a long week for me is when you have revival and it actually, let me tell you what revival is. Revival will break out and it will go for 30 days. If you read everything about revival, revival was 30 days. People call revival revival and they can have two meetings. We're having revival. No, you're not. And that's okay. You could be having Holy Ghost meetings and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't call it a revival. A revival is that you're here every night for the 30 days. Can you say amen? That's revival. But let me, let me ask you this. If you can have the biggest breakthroughs in life, what does it really matter? What does it really matter if you can have the biggest breakthroughs in your life, pressing in like you've never pressed in before, be happy than you've ever been happy before, and God show up in a way that he's never showed up before? How many would sit in a meeting like that and just praise God? Can you say amen? Because that's what it's about. You don't rush, you don't rush him. And I'm not building something up to go way out there tonight. I'm just telling you, you've got to press into God like you never have pressed into God. And anyway, we came the fathers. We came from Florida. So I'm not having a 30-minute meeting. We came from Florida. Can you say amen? amen. But I'm going to see the biggest breakthroughs that you've ever seen. The biggest breakthroughs if you've ever experienced. Remember, I did that Spanish church, um, New Year's. He said, would you do the, my New Year's Eve service? I said, sure. He goes, um, what time do you want to start? I said, 7 o'clock. He goes, that's five hours. I actually can tell time. I know, I know what that is. This is what he did to me. We're, you guys do your videos, but you know the praise and everything. And... Um, they played the quickest three songs I've ever heard in my life. They were like, we'll show this gringo. They gave me the microphone at 20 after 7. I thought it would know, go at least an hour, you know. So I have the microphone, and I did not do this. God knows I did not do this. But I tell you, the anointing hit that place, and we started just, just laying it out there and preaching. And I forgot it was New Year's Eve. Totally forgot. I looked up. It was 1 o'clock. I went, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I forgot. Here, everybody kiss your wives, you know. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's what I did. <laughs> uh, they've not invited me back, of course, but, but no, we had a great time. The people had a great time. Amen. You're going to love this when there's a lot of women here tonight. You better grab a hold of this. I was in a church. I was in a church. <laughs> this setting right there, the platform's right here. And the deacon come up to me and uh, like over my shoulder. He said, we don't allow women on the platform. Now this is for you. We don't, we don't allow women on the platform. And I said, okay. See, I can't help how you interpret my okay. My okay don't mean what you think it's going to mean. I just said okay. So I can't help how you interpret that. I just went, okay, just like that. So I looked over my shoulder, and he's back there telling the, the apostle, you know, the main one. And you could see all of them go, hey, you know, hey, it's cool, you know. <laughs> and I knew what was going on, of course. So I got up and preached for three hours, rock solid. I mean intense, intense, over intense. And you know what I preached on? Mary Magdalene. <laughs> for three rock solid hours. I said, Mary, he's alive. She was the first one that ever spread the gospel. No man ever spread the gospel. He's alive. I seen him. He's alive. He's alive. I seen him. He's alive. I'm telling you, I have seen him. He is alive. For three hours, I'm nailing it. He's alive. And the man was going, no, he's not. I didn't know. I know he's not. And Jesus rebuked the men for not believing. Now, go read it. He rebuked the men for not believing. And Mary's going, I've seen him. I've seen him. I thought, you know, if you're going to get kicked out, get kicked out for a good reason. Not because you were there for 30 minutes. You know, 
I mean, get kicked out for a reason. You know, you went three hours. You're never coming back. Okay. <laughs> like, I would really care. But you know what? Today, now this happened what? Back in, wow, it must have been like 2009, 2010. Today, they have women on the platform. Somebody had to break that spirit. Somebody had to break that religious spirit. Can you say amen? amen. And I'm a, I, I, I'm a revivalist. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you. I'm a revivalist. That's what a revivalist does. Comes in and plows the ground. Can you say amen? amen. And run off every demon that they can run off. That's what a, revival, that's what a revivalist does. That's, that's my assignment. That's the assignment that God gave me. I didn't pick it. He gave it to me. Right. Amen? Amen? I want you to go with me to John 15. I know what I want to preach now. I've just been greeting you. <laughs> hey, thanks for helping me today. That really, that really was good. I really, really appreciate it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know what I'm going to do? This does not have a wind piece, does it? Or did I knock it off? I probably blew it off. <laughs> People are thinking, my God, is he breathing? <gasps> oh, I can't breathe out my nose. I got it. This just hit my spirit. And I'm like this in meetings. I, I have to ask my wife sometimes, what did I say? And she goes, well, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this. I said, really? And she goes, yeah, but I do whatever, whatever I say I do. I don't, I just do it. So I was sitting over here tonight just going through some things and in my spirit. This came to me, and Pastor Kevin and Pastor Kimmy, how many know they're great pastors? Come on, give them a hand. You can do better than that. Give them a hand. You guys have got to tell me when. I mean, I want y'all to go to a vacation place. <laughs> you think it might be Hawaii? <laughs> I want you guys, I, I'm going to send you, Vicky and I are going to send you a place, just, just y'all, and I'm going to put you up in a nice hotel, and I'm going to do that for three days and two nights, Wherever you guys want to go around here, you just got to tell me when. But let me tell you why I'm saying that. You guys need a break. Thank for you for your support. But you guys, you guys need a break. And you need to, you need to get away. And everything's going to be fine. You've got enough support here. People around y'all, everything's going to be fine. Correct? But we're going to work that out. And I don't want to hear I can't do it. You can do it. You just got to make it happen. And it'd be the best time. It'd be, it, you need that. That way you can, th you can really get and hear what God has for you. Amen. So that's, that's that we're going to do that. Out of John 15, I want to read this to you. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear, bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now, I want you to grab a hold of what this is here, what Jesus is saying, that the Father is the vine dresser, and you've got to make sure that you're connected to that vine. We're branches. We connect to God. But if we're not connected to God, we can't hear from God. If we're not connected to God, then the branch cannot survive. The branch is going to die. Because the vine cannot feed the branch. And you've got to be connected so God is actually feeding you. And so when life comes along, you can't get disconnected. You cannot let the branch die off. You can't let it even have a crack. It's got to be there rock solid. Life can throw you everything, but it don't mean that you give up. You've got to stay connected to the vine dresser because he's the dresser, and he's going to tell you what you need to do. As long as I'm connected to him, then he's going to tell me what I need to do. Can you say amen? amen. And it's going to get so good that he's going to come and prune you so you actually can do more. Amen. 
Because when you do what God's wanting you to do, the growth is going to be so good, he's going to go, sons, daughters, come here. Let me shape you up a little bit more. Let me show you how you can get more. Let me prune you, bring you back a little bit so you can even grow more. That's who you are tonight. You're about to grow more than you've ever grown in your life because you're going to stay connected to him more than you've ever stayed connected to him. You're not going to let life take you and get you disconnected. You've got to refuse to get disconnected. Nope, I'm, I belong to that vine dresser. Nope, I belong to that, that to my God. This world cannot disconnect me. I'm going to stay connected. I don't care what it, I have to go through. I'm going to stay connected. Now, what does that do for you? It brings you healing. It brings you happiness. It brings everything that God has for you because he says, I'm a God who rewards. If you diligently seek me, I'm a God who rewards. So there is a reward for staying connected. And if you look at that in some, say, the dates, if you look at that over in Hebrews eleven six, 6, he says, if you diligently seek me, I'm a God who rewards. Do you know what reward means? I'll pay you. That's what it says. I will pay you. Look it up. Go look up and see what it says. He says, I will pay you because I'm rewarding you. Why? Because you're staying connected. Life cannot take you. You're going to stay connected no matter what. No matter what life throws to you, I'm going to stay connected. Can you say amen? amen? So that's what you should grab a hold of, that you're going to stay connected there. It also tells you, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. It's the word that makes me unbelievable clean. It's the word that will get me through everything. Because of the word, not because of my sense. If you look at the five senses, the touch, the smell, the hearing, when you look at the five senses, none of them have to do with the Bible. None of them. You can ask, well, I don't feel. I'm supposed to feel. I don't feel. I don't feel him. You're not supposed to feel him. Are you with me? This is not, this is not a feeling that you think you're going to feel. Can you say Amen. It's not about feelings. You can hear the word of God and get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go, oh, my God, God just spoke to me. It's not about a feeling. If you're waiting for a feeling, you're, you're missing the whole word. It's not about the feeling. It's about receiving that word as a seed, and you're going to water that seed. Because the Bible says the seed is the word of God, and you're going to water that seed. Can you say amen? It tells you here, abide in me, and I'm in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So it means that you cannot go out here and do anything on your own if you don't have him with you. It's not going to work. You're going to work yourself to death. But you're not going to see the fruits of that. Because the one that gives you the blessing, the one that gives you that is God himself. Because when you're connected to him, he speaks to you. And when he speaks to you, you know what you need to do. That's why, that's why it really gets me when people want to increase, they go to the world to get the increase instead of going to the kingdom. Because God will give you the increase. God will give you the peace of mind. Do you really think the world will give you the peace of mind? No way. They're the ones that told you to line up and get the shot. That'll keep you up alone. Here, I got something for you, a jab. I got something for you too. <laughs> yeah, let, let me jab you. And then they get on there and watch him all get the shot. It's probably full of something that, what do you call it, uh, Salem or whatever they call it? Saline. Saline. So it's probably full of nothing, yeah. of nothing. You know, because anyway, I'm not going to go down that road. <laughs> But I know I'm going to abide in him. I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And this is misquoted a lot when I talk, when I talk to believers. They go, yeah, you're supposed to produce fruit. That's not what it says. Read it. It says you'll produce much fruit. Not fruit. I'm not, introduced, I'm not interested in fr barely getting it. I want the abundance. The Bible talks about the abundance. I want the abundance. Can you say amen? amen? 
So if I abide in him and I do not back off and I keep my word and he keeps his word, because he says I cannot be mocked and I cannot lie. Well, I'm going to be the one I did this. You cannot lie. You cannot be mocked. Now I expect you to do what you need to do because it's his word. If, if y'all heard my prayer, I'd put most of you in the ER because this is what his word says. I did this. Now you've got to do what you've got to do. And he always does. There's no doubt. Well, you can't talk to God like that. Well, nobody told Moses that. <laughs> Moses did not get that memo. Because Moses always <laughs> talked to God about, no, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, come on, wait, think about this. You know, what about this? You know, but Moses would win victory. Can you say amen? amen. So again, when you do his word, he has to do his word. That's how it works. Without that, it's not, it's not going to work. And that's why you've you got to stand on God's ground. And when things happen, don't receive it. People drink the Kool-Aid all the time. Don't, you don't have to drink the Kool-Aid. If anyone does not abide in me, if anyone does not abide in me, he casts out as a branch, and he withers. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Without God, you have no, you're not going to be able to do anything. I'm trying to stay in an area so I'm not driving Pastor Kevin nuts back there with the camera, you know, because I go in, go out, go in, go out. But what you've got to do is you've got to, you've got to stay into his word. If, I abide, if he abides in you, you abide in him. In other words, you're partners. There's a covenant. You are in this together. And I don't ever want to let go of that. I know what it is to be on your own. I know what it is when you're trying to do everything on your own. It's a struggle. It's not what God has for you. God has more for you than what the world could ever have for you. God has all that. You know, there's many ways to build the kingdom of God, but God, God has victory for your life. God does not have you barely getting by, and God does not have you being sick. God does not have you where you can't see. God does not have you where you're about your ear. All that is fixable. All that is fixed right now. Can you say amen? God does not have you like that. God has nothing but the best for you because you're his child. And not in the Bible even says everybody that calls him a child is not a child. You're his child. You're his children. Can you say amen? amen. And as a good father, he's going to take care of you. Regardless, he's going to take care of you. He has things for you. He has blessings for you, comfort for you. He has a peace of mind for you. He has everything. He says, cast your cares all upon me. And I'm, I'll tell you something, congregation. I'm good at that. I am very good at that. Uh, hello, Jesus, uh, this is not for me. This is for you. So you need to take care of this. I don't have time. Oop, moving on. And I don't even think about it no more. Because he said, cast all your cares upon him. You've got to do that. You cannot figure it out. People are trying to figure things out. Get out of the way. Let God be God. Watch what God can do. He, you know, again, I read the, the list to the, the Sunday crowd. You know, the power that's on the inside of you. You know, if he can be in the fourth man of the fire, do you not think he can get you in a situation to where you don't have to worry about this? If he's in the lion's den with Daniel, you know what? Gas prices went up. Who gives a rip? God's paying it anyway. God's going to take care of it. The more nervous you are about it, the more that the devil grabs a hold of you. Well, I don't feel good. Quit telling yourself you don't feel good. Or you're not going to feel good. Tell yourself you feel great. Tell yourself this is a great day. Tell yourself that, you know what, God is going to be doing something. You know, I, I live in this. My wife would tell you, I live with the expectation, with the anticipation, God is going to do something. Every day. Not, not when I need it. Every day I, I call it in by just speaking the word, God, I know you're up to something. I don't know what you're up to, but I know it's good. And I know you're going to come up with something. I know something's about to happen. And I get it in me. I get it in my bones. I get it in my spirit. What I leave out is the head. 
I do not, I do not think about this. It's in me. It's in my spirit. It's in my bones. I know my father is about to do something. And I, I've, I've demonstrated that so much. I've had, over the years, people come up to me and say, Pastor, why are you so happy? I know my father's about to do something. Amen. What he's about to do, I have no idea, but I know what he does is going to be good. Amen. I know it's going to be good. If you put yourself in that mode, if you put yourself there, if you, if you live in that area, in that realm, then God is going to do something. God wants to do what, what his children want. He says that's why you have a desire in your heart. You have to have that desire in your heart. And whatever that desire is, he says, I will fulfill that desire. Well, when, you, when he fulfills that desire, get another one. He's filled many desires in my heart. I don't let him grab that desire and fill it and go, okay, that's it. I'm not going to have nothing else now. I'm not going to believe for anything else. This is what I wanted. I'm always putting desires in my heart. I'm always going after everything that I can go after. He fulfills one thing. I guess what? I got another one for you. All the time. She'll tell you all the time. I'm petitioning heaven all the time. Lord, 9 o'clock in the morning, Lord. And, and I just know that the ministry of spirits goes, Lord, uh, it's uh, Randy. Well, what is he want? He's telling the people down there in Hilo, you can do everything. Well, make sure I do everything. That's what he's telling them. So make sure I do everything. Lord, it's Randy again. What does he want? He's telling the people that you're going you're gonna to bless them and they're going to produce a lot of fruit. Well, make sure I bless them. Make sure I do a lot of fruit then. He's talking about me. When people talk about me, they glorify my name and I make sure something's going to happen. Can you say amen? I make sure that I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up because he's mentioning my name, and I love for my name to be mentioned. I love for my name to be glorified. I love for my name to be out where people know me because my children are out there calling out my name. I love that. Because, see, I, when I got saved, I told, I told the Lord, as crazy as I was for the devil, I will be crazier for you. Because I did everything as a heathen. I didn't care. I was a heathen. But when I got saved, oh, Lord, I'm going to do everything that I did for the devil. Won't do it no more. But I will be crazier for you than I ever was for the devil. You got to be that way. You got to be that way. I want people to know I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I want people to know that I know the gospel. I want people to know that. I want people to know that God's doing great things in my life. And it's not a formula. He can do great things in your life. But I'm not ashamed of whatever he's going to do. Well, I don't, think you should, I don't think you should really, really drive them nice cars. I don't really care what you think. I, didn't never, I never asked you to get a nice car. I don't think you should live in a beach on a condo. Well, again, I didn't ask you. I like it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm on the road all the time. When I go home, I feel like I'm on vacation because we're not there that much. But we're blessed. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of it at all. I've gave it all away before. I've gave everything away before. I just know God's my provider. I, it's not about the amounts, folks. The amounts have nothing to do with it. It's about I know that my God's a provider. And I know my God is going to take care of me. And he knows that he can trust me. See, there's the difference right there. Can he trust you if he gives you what you're asking for? Can he trust you? Would you still be here on a weeknight service? Or would something change? He's got to know that he can trust you. When he knows he can trust you, you're going to start seeing things come in like you've never seen before. It's like Hannah. If you'll give me a child, I'll give it back. What woman does that? But he trusted her because why? She did that. And then she had more children. Whatever God puts in your hand, and I see this all the time, Pastor, people will request things from heaven. They'll get it, and they don't do what they requested for. They have a different idea now because now it's in their hand. And now that it's in their hand, they have a better way. No, you better do what you actually uh, requested heaven to do. That's why you're, that's why you're next victory will come. Well, you keep changing your mind. God's not going to show up. 
Are you with me? Yes. Pastor Vicky and I was in a town, you know, from Florida up north and in there. We were, you know, this pastor found out that we were there. So he called me and he said, will you come by and see me? He goes, I have 72 employees, which I've been there before. I have 72 employees, but what I've told the congregation, but he says, I've made a huge mistake and I'm getting foreclosed on. 25 years there and I'm getting foreclosed on. And he goes, will you come by? And I said, we went and they had the staff over in another room. It's 72 staff. Some of them have been there the whole time. And um, he says, I want you to talk to my staff. And I'm thinking, why? I mean, who wants to go in that meeting? <laughs> Somebody that has a third eye, I reckon. But I would send Pastor Sage in there. <laughs> you know, Pastor Sage, I really feel led by God. You need to do this meeting. <laughs> I asked Vicky, you want this one? <laughs> but no, he told me all that. And uh, so I got on the, you know, the little platform, and as soon as my hand hit the microphone, oh, my gosh, the anointing showed up. As soon as my hand hit the microphone, I actually I told the, the staff, I said, I just want to let you know that your pastor, you know, he knows he's got to go to the bank tomorrow. Y'all know that. I just want to let you know tomorrow will be the best day he's ever had. And then the, the staff is now looking at me like I have a third eye because they're getting foreclosed on. How can that be the best day he's ever had? Only God could do something like that. And then he actually pulled me to the side and he goes, did you hear what I told you? I said, I heard everything. Well, how can you say that? I said, Pastor, you left out. Daddy's going to be there. You left that out. Dad's coming. And, and, and he couldn't believe that what I just told his staff. And then he goes, will you go with me? Now, this was when a lot of people would go, you know, I've got a schedule. And, um, <laughs> you know, I can't move things around, but I'm going to pray for you. You hear that all the time from believers. But I'm going to pray for you. And uh, as soon as you get out, you let me know what happened. Because I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, me and Vicky, we'll go. He goes, when well, the guy is a roaring lion. I said, I like lions. It matter to me. Let's do it. Again, this is boldness. This is faith. This is believing. This is everything I'm talking to you about tonight that can come into your life. Whatever you're facing, you can get rid of it. You don't have to accept it. It's not of God. Right. Are you with me? So we met him on the 19th floor of a really nice bank and in the conference room and, and uh, everything and really nice furniture. And I've, I've been in some very elaborate places being in business and high dollars. And, but I didn't know why I was walking around, but I kept walking around. She sat down, the pastor sat down, and I'm walking around looking at the furniture. I said, I really like that. I'm not going to walk around because I'll get off the cameras. I'm walking around and everything, man, I really like that. And I just kept walking. I said, man, I really like that. And I just kept walking. And I looked over at my wife, and she did this. <laughs> That's not a I love you symbol. That's not like I, I miss you. You know, I just, you know, you're too far away from me. Well, can you come over here with me? This is like, <laughs> what? Will you sit down and shut up? Yeah, out of this little redhead right here. <laughs> Will you sit down and shut up? This pastor is scared out of its wits. You're walking around talking about the furniture. <laughs> I said, no, I like the furniture. <laughs> so I kept w walking around, kept looking. Because I know now, you know, I, I knew back then, but now I know even better, I kept just walking around, and then he came out of a side door. You know, huh? Yeah, he came out of a, another door. He had enough paper to choke a cow, you know, and he had that banker's walk. He was taking this guy out. It was over. And I, I intercepted him. I T-boned him. 
when he was walking, I went right there in it. T-bone, put my hand out, shook his hand. I said, I'm Pastor Randy Hooper, and I came today just to hear the good news that you're about to give that pastor. And I sat down. And he um, looked at that pastor after he sat down. He went, you know what, pastor? I think you can make it. You owe us a lot of money, but I'm going to take what you owe us and I'm going to put in the rears of the loan. He says, then I'm going to take another year and put it in the rears of the loan. He says, I'm not going to bother you for over a year because I think you can make it. That's only God, folks. But it took someone with boldness. It took someone that would follow through with that with the spirit of boldness. And so when the, the banker left, I looked at that pastor. I said, was that the roaring lion? He goes, I've never seen him act that way. I said, Pastor, you left Daddy out. You forgot. Yeah, you made a mistake, but you forgot Daddy was going to show up. You forgot about that. Now, he had over 2,000 people. He goes, come and preach Sunday. Because he told his congregation, can you imagine, Pastor Sage and you, you pastors here, can you imagine stepping on a platform of that size and telling the people that it's all worked out and the ministry's not going to be foreclosed on, can you imagine the excitement? Can you? Visualize that. Pastor Kevin, can you imagine that? You step out on a platform, they're not going to get foreclosed on no more. All the excitement that's going to be there. See, I don't know because I didn't go. I just knew it would be good. Because it tells you here, in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. The Lord says if you get on that platform, people are going to think you did it. And you know I did it. So I wouldn't get on the platform. And I said, Pastor, don't even mention my name. God did this. I was just the instrument, the, mess the messenger, but God did this. But don't even mention my name. He's in, still in ministry today. Somebody had to stand beside him with faith, with believing, with a boldness, that would equal victory. Do you know that's you? That you can walk through life with faith, with believing, with boldness, and have victory. If you will, if you will allow that and, try, and get out of the way. There's too many people in the way of their circumstances. That's why God can't do anything. You just need to let God be God. Greater he that's in you than he's in the world. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? A thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but Jesus says, I came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. Amen. This is about you surrendering everything over to him. That's what this is about. This is about you surrendering everything to him so he can move in the direction that you want. But you have to make a commitment. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You've got to make a commitment. And your commitment should be, I'm in his word 100%. I might not understand everything. I'm, I'm here to tell you I don't understand everything. I think someone that stood on a platform and said they understood everything, I'd probably run. Because you know what? We still are learning. That's why we keep reading, keep studying. We still are learning. The day that I quit reading, the day that I quit studying, I'm going to be in trouble. You know, you've got to get into God's word and let God's word get into you. You've got to buy into him. He's got to buy into you. Can you say amen? amen. But there's a trade-off there that's always has stuck with me for years, that I would produce much fruit. I'm going to, folks, I'm telling you, this, me and this woman and our staff and our ministry, we're going to produce, we produce, not going, we do produce much fruit. 
And I'm not ashamed of that. We produce much fruit. And you know what? I want more. Amen. And the only reason I want more is so I can do more. Amen. I, want to be do, I want to be able to do more for the kingdom. Because people have asked me, which I really think is a pretty stupid question, do you think if you had more money you could do more? I mean, naturally, in the natural, you would say yes, but I didn't answer it in the natural. I said, this is what I do know. I know I can't work no harder than I work now, and I already have, I already act like I have everything. Because money's not going to influence me. That's not going to happen. Because God asked me a few years ago, he goes, would you do meetings because you had the money, or would you do meetings because you heard from me to do the meeting? It's a big difference. A lot of people are going around doing meetings because they have the money. But you'll also notice there's no anointing. I want the anointing. I want to see the fruits. I want to see what God's doing. I want to see the movement of God. I want to see God come through here and sweep through this house, heal every sickness that you have, heal everything in your body that you're going through, and I want him to bring you the biggest blessings that you've ever had in your life. Can you say amen? There's nothing wrong with that. If you're ashamed of it, be careful because he'll just give it to someone else. Receive what he has for you. Because what he has for you is a lot. I remember this altar call so so clearly in Florida. And this, this guy, there were several people at the altar, but this one stood out. And I said, what do, you, what do you do? He goes, I don't do anything. I don't have no work. I said, what do, you, what do you want to do for work? He said, anything. I said, God's not into anything. That's why you don't do anything, because he's not into anything. <laughs> just like that. I mean, my mic's on. I'm talking just like that. I said, no, what do you want to do? He goes, well, I am an electrician. I like, to, I like to go and do, be an electrician. I said, well, go and be an electrician. I said, where do you want to work at? Anywhere. God's not into anywhere. Where do you want to go work at? I mean, we're having it out right here. Where do you want to go work at? Then he named the place, gave the directions, everything. He's giving details how to get there. I know how to get there. He's telling me, well, you go down here, make a level, you do it. He's doing out that. I said, that's awesome. I said, go. I said, when you get the application, right, atop, right across the top of the application, I want you to put, Jesus sent me. Amen. If you're not ashamed of him, he's not ashamed of you. And he did it. He put right across his application, Jesus sent me. It was so impressive that when he turned it in, the HR went and got the owner. Because usually they processed it a few days. It was actually a big company. They said, no, we, we've, I've got to get the owner on this one. And the owner came out, had his application in his hand, and went up to him. You know what his words were? Exactly. We've been waiting for you. That's what he said. He goes, we've been waiting for you. He says, I'm going to hire you today. I'm going to give you the most that I can give you. I'm going to put you on my insurance as soon as I put you on my insurance, but I need you. And the guy said, I have a couple of conditions. Just listen to him. I think he said now that, uh, wait a minute, this is going too fast, but I have these conditions. He goes, what are they? He goes, I'm a soul winner at a church on Saturday, and I go to church on Sunday. And the owner said, I'll never work you on a Saturday, and I'll never work you on a Sunday. Again, that's boldness. That's right. He stood up to God's word. And that's what's wrong with people today. They don't stand up. They don't stand up to God's word. They really don't. They don't stand up that God can do all this if you ask for it. Whatever you ask for, you've got to believe to receive it. He says, ask, seek, and knock. And that's a whole message in itself I'm not going to go through. But that you've got to believe whatever I ask for that I'm going to receive what I'm asking for. You just got to get into your bones. It's got to get into you. Not just words. Not just a saying. Not something that just sounds good. It, you got to feel it. God, is this you? You got to feel it and know that it's God. Uh, you, watch, you watch what God does for you. Can you say amen? amen. I don't wanna, I'm going to wrap this up in these scriptures. If anyone does not abide in me, he, cast, he is cast out a branch and withers, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire, and it shall be done for you.
But how many believe that? Well, then all your desires should be met. If they're not being met, folks, there's a problem. There's something that, that's not being addressed. Because it's whatever you ask for, I will give you. And I can go around and ask a lot of people, are you getting everything that God, you've asked for? And there's going to be people who say no. There's a problem. And it's not God. There's an issue. You've got, you've got to find or know that issue and get rid of it. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. You can't come to church and hate a few and love other ones. It don't work that way. You got to be all in. 100%. You got to be all in. And when you're all in, you're going to see God's all in. That's why you got to take its word and put in you 100%. I don't care what the situation is because I promise you he don't. Everybody magnifies the problem. God don't magnify the problem. He just gets rid of it. Again, if he can split the Red Sea, why can he not handle the problem? If he can be in the fourth man of the fire, why can he not handle the problem? And I, have, I associate things like that. Because if he can do all that, then guess what? Then he can do what you ask him for. He can do that. But you've got to believe he can do that. And I'm going to finish up with this story. I, I just feel like God, the Holy Spirit, tell me to shut it down because I'm, I'm going to, you know, give you a chance to make an altar call. I'm not here to drag meetings out. But the Lord told me not shut down to 10, 12 o'clock. I'd do it. But I need to wrap this up because I, I want you to grab a hold of what God is doing. I was in Nicaragua in August of 2016. 72 pastors and leaders. You know, it was August. We went in January, but I went back in August. August of 2016, talking to 72 pastors and leaders in Chichigalpa, Nicaragua, the second highest, poorest Hispanic community in the world. Because I go places where people don't want to go. Because God's going to show up. And I was talking to them, and I started, the nine gifts of the Spirit started hitting me. I said, there's going to be a mighty crusade in Chichigalpa, Nicaragua. It's on YouTube and everything now. It's going to be a mighty crusade. It's going to be over 50,000 posters put out. It's going to be over 50 buses running. It's going to be on radio. It's going to be, I think, I'm just calling it out. Pow, 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 pow. Second poorest Hispanic community in the world. And I said, you Nicaraguans are going to pay for it. And they clapped. They were happy. Yay. Clapping. I walked out of that building. When I walked out of the building, the Lord said, the Holy Spirit said, you almost got it right. I said, what do you mean? Almost got it right. He goes, you're going to pay for it. I said, no, I'm not. I said, no, not me. You heard them. They were laughing. They were clapping. They want to pay for this. You didn't see me do any of that. I don't, I don't have the money. I'm not paying for this. Just like that. He goes, no, you're going to pay for it. No, I'm not. No, actually, you are. You're going to pay for that. Oh, my God. And I said, if I'm going to pay for it, give me a sign. I need a sign. You can, you can speak to yourself. You can prophesy to yourself. I need a sign. So I went to a church that Sunday, Sunday night, and I was preaching. Young man answered the altar call, Felipe. He was, that time, I think, 23. Answered the altar call. Went out under the Spirit, laid hands on him. He was out for a couple, of two hours. I'll be honest, it was more like three. It's kind of, you know, don't have short services in Nicaragua, especially. And, um, so anyway, I left, left him there. I didn't know him. And uh, about three days later, he got in touch with us through a pastor. He goes, tell Pastor Randy I heard about his crusade. I'm, I'm in a, the region that I'm third one in charge of this region. He said, tell Pastor Randy I'm going to get him a field, completely lighted, bleachers, and 
tell him it will hold 15,000 people and tell him he don't have to pay a dime for it. And I knew that was a sign. So I went back. I said, I want 50,000 posters. I want 50 buses running. I want it on the radio, and I want it started now. And we're going to do it February the 20th of 2017. So get, I need it done. And I started ordering all that. And then I had our team over there. That was one trip you didn't go. Elvis, you know, was my interpreter. So I'm just with Elvis, and we're riding to uh, a gym over there. I wanted to do some walking, especially after that. And um, on my way there, I started laughing. He goes, Pastor, what are you laughing about? I said, you have no idea what we just, what, what we just did. I said, do you realize what we just did? He goes, yeah, Pastor, we're going after souls. I said, well, now you're being religious on me. We go after souls all the time. I said, we just ordered 50 buses, 50,000 posters. I mean, we're spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Commitments. This has to happen. Commitments. And I'm laughing. Tell, I said, I can't tell you. He goes, no, tell me. I can't tell you. No, tell me, Pastor. Come on, tell me. I said, when I tell you, you're going to be shocked. All right, what is it? I don't have a dime for this. <laughs> I don't have one penny for this. And I'm still laughing. He's not. He's like, I didn't. I didn't have a dime. Not one dime for this. And the Lord told me before your feet ever hits the platform, the crusade will be completely paid for. One week prior before that crusade, because I was out preaching, I wasn't doing, I'm not a very, I'm not a high pressure offering type guy. You know, I would mention it. It's okay to mention things like that. And uh, so anyway, all the money came in. One week prior, the crusade was already paid for. It. So I had Nicaragua on the phone. I had our U.S. team on the phone. We were celebrating. And I remember on uh, February, uh, it was February the 20th, 2017, when my foot hit the top of the platform, he said, I told you I would pay for it. Completely paid for. That crusade. Now, go ahead, give him a hand. That crusade produced 35,000 people. It produced over 5,000 decisions, Amen. healed marriages, healed people crippled, and it's on YouTube. Love Thy Neighbor, Nicaragua. You can find it up there. Love Thy Neighbor, Nicaragua. And it's all over. It was, it was something that, that you have to step out. Why? Because you heard from God. If you heard from God, God's coming through. But you got to make sure you heard from God. See, if you're not in the Word and the Word is not in you, you're not going to hear from God. But if you're in the Word and the Word's in you, you're going to hear from God. That's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to hear from God. Can you say amen? amen? So that opportunity is open for all of you, for you to step out with the faith, with the belief, with the boldness, and with the victory. It's waiting for you to make that move. It's up to you. It's not, it's not up to him because he'll do it because he says whatever you ask for, we will do. Ask, seek, and knock. And that's what I'm going to be preaching on this week is your healing by faith, by believing, by boldness, and by victory. And I'm really going to tap into some of you need to go forward. You're waiting. You're waiting on what God's got to say when God's already told you. You got to step out. You got to go. You got to go do it. I was in Kentucky preaching. This is funny. I was in Kentucky preaching. And when I got through with the message, I was preaching on Jonah. I got through with the message. He said, Pastor, I've been fighting the devil for 20 years. That's what he told me, because I've been fighting the devil for 20 years. You know what I told him? Get away from me. I don't want that spirit on me. <laughs> Just like that. I said, get away from me. I don't want that spirit on me. I said, sir, it don't take 20 years for God to move. 
I said, let me tell you what happened. He told you within the first six months you didn't like it. So you think he's going to change his mind. You're the one that needs to change the mind and go back and do what he told you years ago or you'll never have victory. You'll never have victory. God is going to tell you to do things. You might not think that's God, but if it is God, you got to do it. Are you with me? And you're going to see God show up in your life like you've never seen it before. Amen.